the weekly planet podcast show so sit back relax and give us a go scott and matt and maybe a guest have undertaken an epic pod quest We're gonna ramble on about movies and books and television and film festivals and directors and all this other stuff that i really know nothing about because they made this really long list of things that they want to talk about and i can't even read through all of them but it's gonna be great okay start the show hello and welcome to the daily planet podcast your daily dose of all things movies tv books and anything else we feel like talking about my name is scott daly editor-in-chief of dailyplanetfilms.com i'm joined as always by my co-host and co-editor matt freeman matt how, how you doing I'm doing great, Scott. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, or happy holidays, or, or yeah. whatever. Yeah, happy non-denominational solstice celebration. <laughs> I think I think Christmas has become such a, a secular holiday anyway that I don't understand the problem with Merry Christmas. But anyway, yeah. I was actually shocked that a Target cashier told me Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I had a, a a little girl say Merry Christmas to me. One of my girlfriend's students say Merry Christmas, and then say. If 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 that's what you celebrate, and this is a nine year old girl, so it's it's not just not just older people now. That's adorable. But anyway, <laughs> random tangent. We're we're here to talk about Christmas movies, um, and and we're joined again by uh, our frequent guest James Gentry. James, how's it going? Hey guys, happy holidays. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> Rolls back in back. with a PC. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for coming back, Gentry. We're, we're excited. Um, yeah, no. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, excited absolutely. to come back and chat about some Christmas movies and you know, yeah, lots of yeah. other things. So the the way this is going to work is is like any time we have a, a holiday event, um, we all brought a movie that we're going to talk about. Um, but before we get into that, we wanted to to go over some news. Um, the one thing I wanted to announce is that today, uh, December 22nd, which is the night we're recording this, um, is the one year anniversary of the Daily Planet website. So I started this thing a year ago, um, and it's still going, which is, which is awesome. Um, I just wanted to, to quickly thank both of you guys for all your help. Um, this thing really just started as something I wanted to do in my spare time for fun, and, and, and we've grown it really big. We, we've got a podcast now which is what we're talking on now. So Matt, uh, yeah. James, thanks, you know, for all your help. Um, everyone else that contributes, thank, thank you guys too. Everyone that reads and listens. Thank you. Um, we've got a lot of plans uh, going into next year, um, that I think everyone's going to really like, hopefully we'll grow this, get more people involved. Um, a lot, a lot of fun stuff coming up. So, um, hopefully we have another really great year. So thanks guys. You're welcome, Scott. It's just been fun to be part of this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, very welcome, man. And, and seriously, thank you. Um, you know, I'm sure it goes without saying from our audience and our uh, obviously our friends and contributors. You know that we all appreciate everything you do, man. And we hope to uh, continue and expand. And it's been a lot of fun. And tell people which movies are crappy. <laughs> Always <laughs> valuable service. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, so getting into some some other movie related news. Um, I wanted to talk to you guys about Avatar because Avatar is the highest grossing movie of all time. And because of this, it's naturally getting sequels. Um, it's getting three sequels. And so starting in, in Christmas time, uh, 2017, we're going to get one every year for three years. Uh, Matt, what, what, what's your thought on this? What do you think about Avatar and, and expanding the Avatar universe? I mean, most of my thinking is cribbed from other things that I've read, but it, it's it's interesting to me how Avatar is, like you said, the biggest movie ever, um, at least by the metric of, of revenue. Um, but it's made essentially no cultural impact. Like, like everyone kind of knows what a Navi is and so forth, but it generated no memes. No one quotes Avatar. Um, Nobody I, plays I with Avatar toys. <laughs> he plays with Avatar toy. I mean, it's um, which is sort of shocking because this is the guy who made Aliens, which is one of the most like memed, um, icon iconographically you know vibrant things that we have. Um, so it's it's interesting because I think nobody's terribly excited about um, oh, okay, let me rephrase. I'm not terribly excited about more Avatar movies, <laughs> even though I definitely enjoyed the first one. I enjoyed it 
and then I kind of forgot about it. So we'll, yeah. we'll see. Yeah, we'll I, see. I pulled I pulled my friends, and everyone's like, "Oh, that makes sense. I guess that was to be expected." But nobody seemed really enthusiastic about it. Gentry, what, what do you think? Um, or like, I mean, in terms of the new one, I don't know. Like, I, I mean, it, it's kind of funny. Like, Matt brought up some pretty good points and i mean it was enjoyable it was probably one of my favorite like 3d movies to see but i'm not a 3d person um i generally don't really see those movies and it's probably one of like two or three that i really enjoyed so it has that um i guess that's it was good technical a lot of like really good technical camera work and all that um you know so i'm like i guess i'd be interested to in that respect, but otherwise, I don't know. Um, kind of, kind of, it kind of caught me off guard. So I really have no opinion either way in terms of whether they should try to continue. Um, I guess a story that seemed to conclude. But, yeah, that that I mean, that's I think why it made the money it did because everyone was told yeah. this is a movie you have to experience. Absolutely, in three. It was definitely the draw, and it really was great. You know, it's funny, Gentry. Just you talking reminded me that I really did enjoy this movie the first time. But yeah. somehow that doesn't parlay into any huge desire for me to see sequels. No, it really doesn't. Um, but you know, you know, think, this he made Terminator and then he made Terminator Two. So right, this is a man who knows how to make. Sequels. I was gonna say he's got potential <laughs> for sure. You know, like I, yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. Like the story was kind of basic. It wasn't very memorable. Like there wasn't. There's not a lot. Of, like I don't. I mean, Scott, you know, you, you know how many times I quote movies or how many, and you know, I like Avatar. And terrible quotes too, and you know whatever. But like <laughs> Avatar, um, there's not really any that I really think about often or anything like that. Um, so that's yeah, that's there, a there's, something. there's nothing, and and Matt's yeah. exactly right. There's been absolutely no cultural impact for a movie yeah. that made two point seven billion dollars. Interesting. It's just really it's crazy to me that that this has left no mark on our culture. Like the number two video, uh, movie is is Titanic, and we have, there's Titanic memes and like Titanic. Spoofs out the ass but yeah. there's nothing there's nothing and matt you said that you think that people um know what the navi are and i actually if you polled people what a navi was i don't think people would know what it is yeah. i think people would say oh the avatar blue guys i don't think like <laughs> this is like it's just a, it's such a weird phenomenon this yeah. movie um we'll see i mean i i don't I, I, there's no way the sequels are going to do as good, but if these guys think they can grab another billion dollars, they're going to yeah. keep making movies. So I don't know. We'll yeah. see. I, I like James Cameron, so yeah, he, he gets yeah, exactly. Of doubt. Exactly. Always has potential for sure. Um, at least, if anything, to make a big, entertaining, visually appealing flick. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, be interesting to see if that story actually. So what like that actually involves into like the fact that he's now just a Navi <laughs> or cut off or whatever the hell they did. I have a theory. Uh, reborn. I have but... a theory that the movie's just going to be about people avataring into all different kinds of stuff. So they're just going to avatar into machines and frogs. It's going to be crazy. <laughs> just, just this big fucking game like Matrix. Yeah. To generate into a total acid trip by the end. <laughs> Uh, Which, the end of 2001, basically. <laughs> the entire yeah, movie. Pretty much. <laughs> God. Um, so, speaking of, of box office, though, um, obviously we have to to touch on Star Wars. We're not going to talk about anything specific to the story or uh, really anything about the movie. We're going to have our own special uh, bonus podcast episode once Matt has gotten to see the movie. Um but since he hasn't yet, we're going to not talk about that. But what we are going to talk about is the money, because Star Wars made a ton of money. Um, it broke both the uh, domestic and global box office single weekend records, um, which is really impressive when you see that it didn't even open um, in India or China, which are two of the biggest um, box office places globally. So this movie is, of course, going to make a ton of money. Um is it gonna dethrone Avatar? What do you guys think? I think it probably will, um, if for no other reason than it's probably going to be seen by about the same number of people, and now we have more expensive movie tickets. So, yeah, yeah, the, the math kind of works out that way. And I think this will be one that that people see many times. Like 
part of me wonders, did Avatar make its money because every single person on the the planet saw the movie? <laughs> or was it people going... Because I don't think... If, if the draw of Avatar was the special effects, then I don't think going more than once makes sense. But but Star Wars is a movie that people are going to go see more than once. And the really yeah. dedicated people are going to see yep. a ton of times. Um, and, and what is it rated? It's PG? PG. Uh, PG it's probably PG-13, actually. So I'm looking it up. I think PG-13. Uh, rating. That's not helpful. Well, I think it's anyway. Be tight. Uh, yeah, sorry. it is PG-13. I think it's going to be... It's gonna beat Avatar. That's yeah, it would I mean, not shock me, honestly. I, especially after what Jurassic World did. Yeah, that's I true. Think but I mean Jurassic that's World, weird. even for its like it ended at a little over one and a half. And yeah. Avatar sitting at like two point seven. So that's Yeah, it's still that's still a, far a away. long climb. But, but yeah, yeah, I mean I just, it's like a movie like Jurassic World I was not expecting to do that well. Yeah, I still can't believe how well that movie. Is. I know. I Are we the only ones that weren't fans of it? <laughs> That'll be an, another podcast, another time. Oh, I could, I could rip that movie apart. We should do a podcast on Jurassic. We should Park. do, we should do all the Jurassic Park movies. That'd be fun. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I, I did say at the beginning of the year. Uh, I'm, I'm only saying this to take credit for it. If this movie is remotely good, I think it's going to make three billion dollars. That was my. Bold I do remember that. Yep. Um, yeah. It's sitting at 95% on Rotten Tomatoes, so it's good. Um, and we'll see. I mean, I think the, the estimates, the professional box office people are estimating around $2.2 billion, but they're always going to be conservative because no one's going to ever estimate record-breaking. Like, you're just not going to do it. So um, we'll yeah. see. We'll, well see. Plus, plus, I mean, you, you, didn't, you didn't specify in your prediction whether – your, whether it was going to make the money by um, ticket sales, I mean, I'm sure they've made with with all their you know toy lines and stuff. They made another oh, yeah. incremental incremental yeah. lot of money. I meant specifically ticket gross, oh, okay. but um, no, yeah, they're going to make. I mean, that's Disney makes all their money off their merchandise. Yeah, um, but yeah, we'll see. I think it's going to be interesting. I, I hope it does dethrone Avatar, just because I think then Avatar would be officially a movie that no one talks about ever because <laughs> i think yeah. the only reason they talk about it right now is because it's sitting at number one i guess that'll change in in a couple of years but right um yeah I, I hope i hope it does well um it's exciting it's it cool is. to see it see it perform well yeah All right. and just as a quick side note it's i couldn't like i think it's the first movie i've seen multiple times in a theater in like over five years um i don't know how or i don't know why i'm surprised like i don't know so, but yeah, I, I saw Mad Max three times. <laughs> I should have absolutely. I, I I went I went twice, and then I went to a theater with the plan to see another movie. And I got there, and there was a showing of Mad Max about to start, and I was like, eh, I'm just gonna go see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, there's definitely a couple of films I w- I definitely should have seen more than once, um, and I wanted to. It's just, I, man, yeah. Anyways, I'm saying a lot about Star Wars. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, of course, we will get into the the details of Star Wars in a, at a later date. But um, let's move on to our recommendations. Um, Gentry, have you watched anything recently that you want to recommend to the fine people out there? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So I actually binge watched uh, Fargo, which is an FX original, um, obviously similar to the movie that came out. Um, what was it, in the mid nineties? I think. Um, the Coen yeah. Brothers movie, yeah, yeah, the Coen Brothers. Um, it's great, absolutely wonderful show. Um, definitely, a, you know, definitely putting it up there. Um, oh, there's a couple of obviously classic shows I haven't seen, but definitely check it out. It's fantastic acting. Um, Martin Freeman kind of takes it to a whole another level. I'm sure some people know him from Love Actually or the Hobbit movies. Um, he just takes this character. <laughs> I've, <laughs> yeah, I've no. never seen someone start with Love Actually in the movie <laughs> that Martin Freeman's from. <laughs> yeah. I know, I don't know what the other movie. movies he's in. He's in so many other things. What is he in that's good? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good, that's a fair point. I mean, he's in the Sherlock, uh, television show, which is, oh, which is I pretty good. Sherlock. Right. Okay. Uh, but no, he's he's amazing in this. Like he's fantastic. He, uh, I can't really like without really saying anything. But yeah, has he? It takes 
it's kind of like a Breaking Bad. Uh, it's like kind of a character 180. Um, so it's very interesting. Billy Bob Thornton plays. You, what's that? Sorry, you haven't seen the second season, right? I have not seen the second season. Yeah, because I heard. I'm pretty sure it's a completely different story. I, I haven't watched this this show yet, Matt. I don't think you have either. Um, I heard the first season was good, but what I heard what's what's piqued my interest is people keep talking about how just incredible the second season is. Um, so it, it really it's got my interest, and I need to watch it. Um, Gentry, where can where can people see it if they're behind and want to binge it like you did? They can go to if they have Hulu, they can check it out for sure. That's it, right? I, I haven't seen it on Netflix. I haven't seen it on Amazon. So, I mean, it'll, it'll be on Amazon and iTunes probably. Yeah, it pay may per be. Episode, but. Right. I think there's like an FX app. I don't know like exactly what shows or how um, recent they play them, but I know Hulu has all of season one, and I guess it has season two episodes for rent as well. Uh, but yeah, definitely check it out. Cool. I, I will definitely do that. Matt, how about you? What do you got? Yeah, Tangled? Uh, yeah, yeah, Tangled again. Um, no, actually, I did see a movie. Or, uh, actually, it was a, I guess, a documentary series on Netflix called Making a Murderer. Um, and I've, I've been fuming about this all week because it's one of those things that I guess maybe it's a pet peeve of mine, the whole broken criminal justice system thing. I know we normally s- stay away from politics on, on our podcast here, but not this, today. It's Christmas. this topic is, yeah, it's Christmas, so we're going to dive right into politics. Um <laughs> It, it, this this topic is sort of unavoidable, unavoidably political um, because basically it's it's a documentary and um, I mean the documentary really wants you to believe that the so it's it's about um, the trial this guy's murder trial and also the murder trial of his nephew and the documentary wants you to believe that they were that they're um, wrong wrongfully um, accused. And and I, I I happen to agree that they're wrongfully accused based on what I've seen in the documentary. It's possible, of course, that the documentary is misleading and selectively showing things. Um, but um, the reason why it's, it's it's so upsetting and sort of infuriating to watch is um, just you know a very a very precise view of um, a long series of of injustices and and um, improprieties being committed by all levels of the of the justice system and you're just like so angry watching it and every episode almost ends with some new perversion of justice and something terrible happening and, and you're just sickened by the whole thing so go watch it it's great wow <laughs> <laughs> that sounds really sounds, interesting yeah, I, I, I've absolutely. heard I've heard really good stuff is this a Netflix original or is this just they threw it on there I don't fully understand because it they obviously started Make, yeah, taking interviews for this thing like like ten years ago or, or more, when Netflix didn't even exist. Um, so perhaps Netflix is picking it up and and funding certain aspects of it. I I wish I knew more about that. That's a good question, Scott. Um, but yeah, it's on it's on Netflix in its entirety. Um, and yeah, so you can, you can catch up with it there. It. it it reminds me of of um, the act of killing in the sense that like it's extremely upsetting, and I think about it like long after I've stopped watching it. Oh man! Well, now I'm definitely watching it. That's a, that's a documentary that everyone needs to see. I think everyone on the planet needs to yeah, see that documentary. Killing, yeah, definitely checking that out. Yeah. Um. Well, Put great. That in the show notes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. That's probably what I'm going to do as soon as I get off of this call with you, fine people. <laughs> um, yeah. Fantastic. My thing this week um, is another podcast because I'm sure everyone out there doesn't have enough podcasts to listen to. Um, this is I found through the the Earwolf Network, um, uh, which do a, a bunch of different kind of different entertainment podcasts. It's called the Blacklist Table Reads. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the the Blacklist is. Um, basically, this is a listing of uh, movie scripts that haven't gotten made it's a collection of the best scripts of the year that that never got actually made into movies um it's it's just a way of drawing attention to these scripts um and and hopefully getting either their screenwriters or the movies themselves um some work so um what they did is they took this and they they select movies from this and then they reenact them they table read them and record them so it's basically you're listening to the movie um it's really good it's it's very well done. They they hire actual 
actors to come in um, and read the parts. Um, and they've got sound effects and a, a pretty good voice of a narrator reading the directions and the scene setting parts. Um, it's really engrossing. You wouldn't think just hearing a script read would be, but um, I listened to like three of them over the course of a few days, and it's like it's almost like watching a movie. Wow. wow. Yeah. What a great I, I, idea. I just reached for my phone to try to subscribe to that and then remembered I was on a podcast, and so maybe I shouldn't do that. <laughs> but, um, I would definitely check it out, though. The oh, first movie they play oh, is a movie called Balls Out, and it's it's hilarious. Like, I, I understand why this movie didn't get made because it's almost too ridiculous to get made. Um, but the the movie is is so funny. And I think the last one they did for this year is like a, the movie is described as, and this is a perfect setting, it's like the origin of Santa Claus told as a Lord of the Rings type story. And it's really, oh, it's, man. Really, it's really great. It's really funny. Um, but it's just like, they're all really good movies. Um, I, the Blacklist is a cool idea in general. Um, and and do, adding this onto it is, is great. Cool. So do these like get up there in length? Yeah. Okay, so when they first when they story? first started the podcast, they broke it up into like four um, parts each. But then like oh. halfway through, they decided not to do that, and then they started re-releasing all the old ones as just one parters. Um, so nice. yeah, they're about they're about an hour and a half or two hour and a half to two. I mean, it's it, they're reading the script, so it's almost the length of a, a movie. Yeah, it's um, almost the length, right? And this is this is the only podcast that I don't listen to on one and a half or two times speed um, because it kind of ruins the pacing and, and they really do they're, they are acting out the lines. So it, if you listen to it faster than it should be, it kind of ruins that. So cool. Um, Makes sense. Yeah. Definitely. going to check that out. Sweet. Um, all right. So that's, I think that's all we had. So let's get into the, the main event, which is Christmas and Christmas movies. Um, so we, we each brought a movie that uh, we consider our favorite or, um, just a Christmas movie that we really like, um, and, and we're just gonna sit here and, and talk about them. Um, should be a really fun episode. Gentry, let's let's start with you and your movie. Uh, what what movie did you bring to discuss? Okay. Uh, yeah, so I chose Christmas Vacation, just a classic National Lampoon's movie. Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess just get into it, you know. Um, yeah, Christmas so, Vacation. It's Chevy Chase. <laughs> so what uh, is this? Is this a movie that you watch every year? At Christmas time, um, did that start when you were a kid? Like, what's what's your yeah, background with this movie? Right. So, it actually, at you know, when we were young, it was more like once or twice within a span of like two years. But mainly, we would always take it on. Uh, so cheesy, but like, yeah, like actual trips. Like we, you know, we had our like our little our small little tube TV, um, you know, probably like thirteen inch or whatever it was, <laughs> and we'd have VHSs, a bunch of VHSs. Um, anyways, my I guess my parents bought us um, that movie pretty early on, and so it was just one of the movies we always took, and it's just uh, one of my favorite like holiday classics, I guess, and um, just a really funny movie. Like, I, it's actually my favorite out of out of the whole bunch. Um, I did like the you know vacation to to Wally World was was good too, but um, you know I think this one kind of takes the cake because it's kind of like a holiday fun. It does kind of put you in the spirit. Um, it has really good jokes, um, but at the you know at the same time it is. It's really funny, and I think it's the the um, as much as a National Lampoon's movie can be put together. Um, I think it's like the most put together story out of all of them. Um, and yeah, it's you know it's very heartfelt. Um, you know, I think it teaches you a little bit a little bit of something about the holiday. You know, you can't just do it all. Um, it's really kind of just enjoying the moment uh, without having to worry about every single little thing. Just kind of. Kind of my motto, which may not be a great thing, but um, yeah. Overall, it's it's funny. You know, it's um, it's uh, one of my one of my favorite Chevy Chase movies, and um, yeah, I just kind of grew up with it. That and kind of some of the other the other uh, movies that he made, but yeah, yeah. I, I I hadn't seen this movie before this year. I don't know how that happened. It just it just did. Um, I watched it specifically to write about it for our Twelve Days of Christmas movies thing, um, and and I was really. I was really surprised. I think, you know, it's really funny. Of course, it's really funny, but it, it it's more than that. And it's it it reminds me of you know we have we have a lot of comedies now that are, are just strictly comedies. 
um, that don't really have any more depth to them. Um, I think they re-released a, a, a reboot of the Vacation series this year. I don't know if either of you guys saw that. Did I get to see it? I actually mm-hmm. didn't see it myself because it looks so stupid. Um, but, Was it Ed Helms? Yeah. Okay. Um, but from from everything I've read about it, um, it, it was definitely a movie that's there to tell crazy random jokes and, and have really nothing more to it. This movie has a lot to it. Um, it, it does. It, it does talk about you know what Christmas is and, and what it should be. Um, and it, it's, of, of course, you know, it, it is really, really funny and, and it, Chevy Chase is great. Um, but yeah, it's a really impactful Christmas movie. Uh, Matt, uh, uh, do you, do you have any history with this movie? Um, what do you, what do you think of it? Yeah, I don't think I'd seen it until, uh, last year actually. So not as fresh as, as you, but fairly, fairly late. Um, yeah. And I, was surprised at how good it was. I think I had never, I think I had never seen any other um, National Lampoon's movies somehow, um, and I think I just had this whole sense of them as being sort of dumb comedies, um, which I now I understand is probably are. unfair. Well, the, I mean, it seems like they're it's a certain kind of dumb humor, but also this, like, no one's going to say this movie is like a smart comedy, but it's it's hilarious. Like, right. there's there's very high rate of laughs. And kind of hits you in different ways, um, and like, got the, <laughs> yeah. like like both of y'all said, there's a lot of heartfelt moments interspersed with it, and it just really comes together. Um, so I don't really have a history with it, but um, I definitely have come to appreciate it. And, and then after I watched it last year, I really wanted to watch it again this year. I was like, oh, it's Christmas, we get to watch this one again. So yeah, it's definitely one of those, um, you know, just like seeing it when I was so young, and I still got. I mean, most of the jokes, it's just not like they're like super hard to get. Um, but you just kind of appreciate some more of the, some of the more of the humor that you kind of catch, you know, kind of in the last couple of years. Um, and yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it, I really, people hate the Vegas vacation one, you know, I think it's one of the more ridiculous ones that's just kind of dumb. Um, but it's fun to watch. Like it's kind of one of those, you know, on my list of, terribly or should i say awesomely terrible movies um but this one and vacation i thought and like the european one was bad i was not a fan of that one it just didn't I, it was just kind of um it seemed kind of unnecessary i guess but this one and vacation i thought were actually you know were actually pretty decent and that they have you know smart adult jokes not anything like super profound or anything but um something that kind of makes you laugh at the same time it has like a, a good story you know you definitely I yeah, appreciate it, it. I think it, it manages to hit the big Christmas tradition beats, um, and it does so in a way that that seems very natural. Like yeah. it's not a movie that's just a series of vignettes telling different jokes. Like it it, right. it carries on very naturally. I think, um, and it's really funny. And and the, the, the humor. I don't think the humor is dumb in this movie. I think there's no. a lot of it that's slapstick, yeah. but that's right. That's, that's kind of what these vacation movies are, yeah. um, but but it's not like roll your eyes stupid. I think the only yeah. the only part to me that that got roll your eyes stupid was the the poop humor with the the septic tank <laughs> draining right. stuff. Um, but, even, <laughs> but even that like like came back around to be an awesome joke that that the movie ends with. So right, exactly. Um, yeah. Plus, you know, Julie Louis Dreyfus is in it. That's always fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. That whole that whole little side story is funny. They just can't seem to. They end up having an absolute, you know, worse Christmas than even the Griswolds, if 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 that's even possible. You know, ends up being kind of the ironic thing. And yeah, yeah. Well, and there's there's there, there's something there too. I mean, there's something deeper to that. These are people that don't even participate in it. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And they're they're it, it's kind of they're showing both sides of the spectrum. They're showing right. Clark is over enthusiastic about it, and these people don't even care. And both are bad. The, the, the truth is somewhere in the middle. Right. Yeah. Does a good job. Definitely very quotable and, and memeable. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Memorable scenes. A lot of good memorable scenes. Um, but really good. A, a good cast. I, I, I should know more of their names. Some of the older actors, I just can't seem to recall. You know. Um, yeah. But they're funny. They're good. You know, like uh, the, you know, the uncles. You know, those things that he does just annoyingly 
are fantastic. Um, so, yeah. Not Eddie, the older uncle. <laughs> the one that lights the tree. Eddie is an idiot, yes. Right, <laughs> right. yeah, exactly. The toupee and everything. Yeah, and I like, like, there's... This movie is really clever. That that reminds me of of one of the things I enjoyed the most because it tells jokes like this and it, it they're, they're they're smart jokes and that the movie doesn't the movie sets you up for them but you have to be paying attention. So like with the tree catching on fire because you let the match near it is a, is a payoff from the joke when they're showing um, the dog drink all the water from the tree and Clark complaining that it's going to cause his tree to dry out and it's like the movie never like points that out to you right um it it just it just happens like it doesn't specifically (laughs) remind you of of this was because the dog drank out of the tree bowl it just assumes that you're paying attention and know that and that's great yeah yeah uncle lewis yeah that's what it was (laughs) william hickey fantastic yeah a lot of my favorite moments are just his little sarcastic passive aggressive comments that no one even responds to <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah all right cool um is, is there anything else you guys want to talk about i think we all really enjoyed this movie i think this is a, a staple for a lot of people on christmas um and just to say interesting that only one of the three of us is that is true for that but yeah um yeah, especially considering I think in some rating it was like number number one or number two top favorite Christmas movie um, by some survey that I saw. Oh wow! And I, and, wow. I, and I hadn't seen it, so that's crazy. Yeah, I'm glad I watched it. I really am. That this is, I could see this being a movie that I watch every year around Christmas yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, definitely some fun moments, and it's funny enough to where you don't mind like putting it on again and catching their favorite ones. You know, there's always a favorite, always favorite stuff. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. And right. the fast mount, the the fast times at Ridgemont High scene, that is a good one. Where they, kind of, where they do the little reference. Yeah. Um, well, you know that's the thing. That's one that I didn't catch until I was older. Um, whereas I completely missed that when I was younger because I hadn't seen Fast Times. Um, but anyways, we can uh, move on to the next. Cool, Matt. Uh, what what movie did you bring for us? Well, um, A Christmas Story is my favorite Christmas movie, and. And it, I think it always has been, probably. Um, I remember watching this from a really young age. Um, and I think one of the most interesting things uh, in that experience of, of, you know, having a movie that you watch over and over again as you get older is kind of how your perception of it changes. And now I'm in a position where I have a young daughter um, who is old enough to, you know, kind of respond to the things she's seeing on the screen. And, and it's funny because... I can sort of see her reacting the same way I remember reacting to certain things, like specifically where I didn't get that certain things were supposed to be funny. Um, uh, so, for example, there's the scene where the boy gets his tongue stuck to the telephone pole or, or to the, yeah, whatever, yeah. some kind of pole. Right. And, and I'm, I'm sitting there cracking up because I laugh at movies. <laughs> um, and, and my daughter turns to look at me very sternly and says, Daddy, don't do that. <laughs> because it's inappropriate that I'm laughing when this boy is obviously suffering, <laughs> and um, and I and I, I apologized, um, but um, yeah. So anyway, I think this is a a great movie. Awesome. I, I I love how it's um, it's got so many little intertwining stories. It's almost, I mean, it is more or less based on um this guy's memoirs. So it really comes across as more of a, a book of short stories or a movie of short stories than like a coherent movie. But there is right. the overarching tie-in plot of you'll shoot your eye out, yep. and uh, which of course resolves with him almost shooting his eye out, <laughs> which is perfect sarcastic um, ending to this movie. Um, so yep. yeah, I just I just can't get enough of this movie. I think I we we I rent I went out of my way to rent it this Christmas just because I, I realized we didn't have it and. And uh, I wanted to be able to see it kind of whenever I wanted to. So that's how much I like it. Yeah. So this is again, and I'm I'm making myself out as kind of a, a Scrooge here, but this is another movie that I did not watch very much. I mean, I, I've seen it before for sure, but this is not on my annual list of Christmas movies. This is not a movie me and my family watched growing up. Um, it's not a movie I I I've, I've I don't think I've seen it in five or six years. Um, 
I enjoyed it, but it, I, for whatever reason, it just never stuck with me. I think so much of your Christmas traditions are are just tied to whatever movies you watched as a kid. So yeah, um, even if I, I like this movie a lot and have absolutely nothing wrong with it, it's just not one I reach for. So um, so I I can't um, you know talk it up very much because it's been so long since I've seen it. But is there? I mean, and you, Matt, you can remind me. Um, is there like an overarching thing that this this thing's trying to say about Christmas, or is it literally just like a, a satire? Yeah, I mean, basically. So, so my take upon this last time I watched it, um, which I wrote about actually, was was that I noticed a lot more how this is sort of the setting is very influenced by the fact that this is basically during the Great Depression. And so, um, they're like the family isn't totally destitute, but but a lot of the subplots in very subtle ways tie into the fact that their lives are you know sort of sort of rough and and they, they don't have a lot. And so Christmas kind of takes on a different meaning when your characters don't have any toys that they don't you know that they don't get for Christmas. And like his quest his quest to get this one. Red Ryder BB gun is like this is kind of the main thing that he's going to get, like for the year. You kind of get that. You kind of get that impression, um, and and he's just so invested in getting this, um, you know, for the sake of his identity. And ultimately, I mean, I, I guess one of the, another thing that strikes me, I, I wouldn't, I don't think this is a good answer to your question because it's not like the movie really focuses on this too much, but. Um, the the dad character is sort of alternately played as being either kind of a, a silly buffoon or being kind of scary, like mm-hmm. in, in that the kids are kind of scared of him. Um, but like kind of one of the more um, emotional moments of the movie is when Ralphie thinks he's not going to get his BB gun because he's opened all the presents under the tree and he's just kind of sitting there forlorn, forlornly and his dad who you really have no idea that his dad even knows anything that's going on ever. Um, his dad is like, Hey, isn't there a, a box over there? What's in there? And, and his, mm-hmm. it, even his mom doesn't know what it is. And it, so his dad has gone out and secretly bought this for him. Um, <laughs> and, and is like so overjoyed and gleeful to watch him open his present. Um, and it's, it's great cause it's like a little, a little love letter to dads, I guess. Um, that, and I guess the movie is just full of like really nice little interactions between the parents. It and is very little moments, you know. Mm-hmm. That, um, that's really cool. I, I think that's that's a pretty accurate depiction of how a kid views their dad, uh, mm-hmm. alternating between scary and goofy. Yeah. Um, or at, le- at least my dad. Um, who it I, really I is. I know is listening. I love you, dad. <laughs> um, but <laughs> um, you know, my dad was in the air force, so he, he's a really goofy, sarcastic guy. But also, he. Uh, knows how to how to yell at people if they've done bad stuff. So mm-hmm. it, there there was always that that back and forth. So that's really cool to see that a movie accurately depicts that. Um, but then yeah, at the yeah. end, he's still the guy that gets the, the the toy that the kid wanted because he's paying attention. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's funny. I think the the movie is sort of from the perspective of the kid. Like even the swearing, most of the swearing that happens is just gibberish. Um, because a kid, a kid wouldn't know what was being said, really. Um, yeah. So that's cool. Gentry, what, I, you talked a little bit, but what was your experience uh, with this movie? Yeah, no, um, absolutely. Y'all had uh, some some great things to say for sure. It's uh, it's definitely the other movie that uh, I've pretty much seen every year, and that's you know, um, thanks to TNT, of course. <laughs> Um, good old TNT, shout out to them. Uh, but yeah, this movie's been playing on that channel, I think seriously since it's like maybe as far back as like 2002 or maybe even like 1999. It's been a long time, but anyway, like I, one year we just kind of saw it. Um, obviously I was young, but I wasn't like super, super young uh, when I first saw it. And then I was like, oh great. So it's gonna be one of these channels that just plays one movie over and over and, and uh, we actually enjoyed it a lot. Like we probably saw it like two, maybe three times that one Christmas, that first Christmas. Um, and we continued to to pretty much watch it at least once or twice every year for a long time. Whether it was like me and my brother, or me and my sister, or shoot, eventually just you know me, I just kind of put it on as background noise. 
Um, but it is a great movie. Um, and it is exactly what Matt said. You know, a lot of like different scenes, you know, it's like almost like just chaos, you know, which one can get, um, which one, you know, ends up being more, you know, uh, you know, every scene ends up being more chaotic than the next, but each one has uh, kind of these special moments, um, that tie into kind of like the family dynamic for sure. Um, you know, the, the father is exactly like that. And it does remind us, you know, a lot of, you know, it reminds me of my dad as well. Um, but the mom is, is also, you know, exactly, exactly kind of like my mom, you know, where it's like, they, you know, she makes like the bunny costume. He's like, Oh, you know, kind of where the, does the little thing that puts all her heart into it. And then, you know, the kid doesn't like it, you know, just typical mom stuff. <laughs> you know, it's like, nice try mom. Thanks. Um, but, uh, some very funny moments, um, some very, you know, some classic scenes and stuff. I, I, I'll, you know, I think probably still one of my favorite actual, you know, little sequences is, um, where he, you know, obviously he's helping his dad change the tire and he curses and the dad catches him and he's just quiet about it. And he tells the mom and the mom freaks out and she makes him do the soap in the mouth. Um, and she says, where did, you know, where did you get that from? And he, you know, he basically, he rats out like one of his friends, you know, basically just makes something up and the mom calls the other mom and you can hear the friend in the background, like just kind of like, you know, oh, mom, you know, just like yelling. And then, and then it just gets really bad. And he starts like, you know, just like yelling. And it's just one of those ridiculous scenes, you know, just one of those moments where it's like exaggerated, but perfectly done oh yeah so and, funny and then he has the fantasy that he's going to go blind from having the soap in his mouth and his <laughs> parents are going to feel bad <laughs> yes, which exactly. is just the most like nonsense hilarious <laughs> thing <laughs> so much nonsense yeah he has like a like a real christmas carol type of flashback uh you know dream sequence yeah exactly yeah. and standing there with like his little hat and his cane and he's blind yeah. Because of the soap, and um, it's just really good, you know. Even like when he gets to, he finally gets the Red Rider BB gun. I mean, it's exactly right. It's like full circle. Um, you know, he really does his best throughout the movie to line up every reason why he would and should get this present. Um, you know, he writes, you know, he like turns in his paper. Um, he you know tries to be good. He does like his chores. He takes care of his brother and all that stuff. You know, all the while like you know mischief happening. And and then it just ends up, he he ends up almost shooting his eye out, <laughs> you know, yeah. breaks his glasses, and then somehow you know pulls off another stunt, you know, and and gets away with that. But um, I think it's I think it's really interesting to look at the two movies that you guys have brought and and look how um, how differently they approach the subject of Christmas. I mean, if you look at these, Christmas Vacation is is. Christmas from the viewpoint of an adult mm -hmm. where a Christmas story is very much Christmas from, yep. from the view of a child. And it's very yeah. funny that the, the conflict and the problems uh, that's overcome in these movies are reflective of that. The, the conflict in, in a Christmas story is a kid wants to get this present in Christmas yep. vacation. It's, it's a guy trying too hard Christmas. to make the perfect Christmas. Um, and that's really interesting to, to, to look at those two movies and compare them to each other. So that's yeah. cool. I'm glad you guys brought both of those movies. Yeah. What did you bring us, Scott? I brought my favorite Christmas movie, which is a movie that's technically not even really about Christmas, so it's kind of cheating. Um, but it's also <laughs> it's also one of my favorite movies, um, which is uh, It's a Wonderful Life. Um, this I, I've written about it before, and my sister wrote about it this year um and wrote about it i mean destroyed it and made me very angry um but it, it's a movie that my family always used to watch um every year like it, you guys had had your your yearly viewings we we would watch a bunch of christmas movies but it would all kind of culminate in this movie we would watch this christmas eve um and i just i i love this movie i love everything about it and it's it's not it's not a christmas movie in the strictest sense but to me it perfectly captures what christmas is supposed to be about um which is you know charity and, and helping people out and um you know finding a way to be grateful for what you have and not um not what you're gonna get which which is a really cheesy message and this is it's, it's a really cheesy movie um but but I th it's just to me it's it's wonderful um this the story of a man who went through life with big dreams and basically accomplished none of them. And he's depressed about it. And, and, you know, my sister's biggest complaint with this movie is 
how depressing that is an outlook that your dream you're not going to get to accomplish your dreams um life isn't going to turn out the way you want but i think that's very intentionally done to illustrate the point that okay well that doesn't mean you, your life can't have value and it can't be good um and I, i think that's such an important message and if you look when when the movie came out was you know right after world war 2 so that's that's a very targeted message um to the people of the time so i i love it um i'm interested to see what you guys think of it though yeah um what what you just said it like i think the vast majority of people probably don't actually live their their dreams because i mean first of all your dreams are sort of extremely ridiculous when you're really young and <laughs> you just kind of temper them as you get older and kind of learn what's feasible. And, and, uh, so I think that's a, I think that's a healthy message to, to have like, like, yeah, you didn't get to do those things that you, that you wanted to do, but look at all the good that you've done. That's basically what the movie is. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, yeah. I, I, I think one thing, you know, it's funny. I, I've definitely sort of, this has been a movie where throughout my life it's sort of been on in the background, but it's not one, that I ever kind of sat down and focused on until uh, fairly, you know, in the last couple of years, I think maybe even in the last year, honestly, because, and I think, I think what happened was it was, it's black and white and my brain just sort of can't fully attend to black and white movies unless I have a good reason. Um, but I think when you wrote about it, I thought to myself, well, you know, now you've pointed out to me some things, so I need to really watch this. And um, so I, I watched it at that time and it was a lot kind of more, I don't know, I don't think darker is the right word. That's not a very precise word, but um, definitely focused a lot more on um, George Bailey's struggles with himself and the people yeah. around him. And it was almost kind of unpleasant to watch at some point, so like in a good way, the movie's trying to make it unpleasant, um, yeah. like where he's kind of <laughs> struggling with his future wife. Um, who he 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 resents and also loves. Um, it's kind of a very interesting take on that. <laughs> yeah, and the the thing that's all very very intentional. And I think what the movie does so well is is really sell that point at at you know how hard of a life it's been for him. And at every turn, you know, he made a choice that took him further and further away from his goals. And I think that's actually a very important part of it too. And when I wrote about it last year, that's what I wrote about is it's paramount that as much as George feels that all these things were thrust upon him, every time he made the choice that took him away from what he really wanted, um, because he's a good person because he put other people before him. And right. I mean, the movie is saying, you know, even when it feels like, like that is ruining your life and making you miserable, that is the most rewarding way to live. And if you live that way, when the chips are down, people will help you. And I, I love that message. It's cheesy, it, but so is Christmas. Christmas is cheesy. Yeah. And this this movie's become... It's, it's, it's so funny to me that a movie that takes place on Christmas, but really has nothing to do specifically with the holiday, um, has become a Christmas staple. It's funny how many of these movies we were watching for this 12 days of Christmas movies had it's a wonderful life on in the background, the character just watching the movie. I mean that, that really cements it to me as like the ultimate Christmas movie um, that whenever you tell a tale around Christmas, you're going to put this movie in the background somewhere. Yeah, I agree. I, um, you know, Scott, like this is kind of, you know, what, um, uh, Christmas vacation was to you. I honestly, I mean, you know, Matt, don't feel bad. I just saw this as well um, last year for the first time. Wow. Um, I've actually only seen it once. Wow. Uh, I think I was the last person in my family also to see it somehow. Even maybe not my sister, but my the rest of my family for sure. And it has nothing to do with anything in particular. I just never got around to it. And I guess I just never, maybe I thought it was like really long. And so I was like, ah, well, I, I'm either reading a book or watching something else or doing something else on Christmas. And, um, it's like, I don't have enough time to pay attention. But you know what? Last year I was like, you know what? Let's just lay down, get some dessert. Let's watch <laughs> this. Let's do it. My, my parents were adamant that I should see it, like finally see it. And so I was like, all right, I'm focused a hundred percent. Um, and it, 
it's exactly you know it's exactly what i what i love about humanity you know what people what i love about people and um i agree it's it is cheesy but it's a true message you know it's absolutely true um you know there's everybody's family even these days uh, fall into some pretty you know can fall into some some tough times and um it's amazing when you're you realize all that you've you know that you've done as an individual or as a family um over time whether that's you know putting people before you or you know not being able to realize your dreams um those people around you with you know what they can actually end up helping you accomplish and stuff is just is remarkable so um it's a very good lesson and definitely enjoyed it i like the dialogue i liked a lot of the side characters kind of quick witticisms and stuff you know i thought it was kind of short but smart you know some some of the lines yeah um very well acted of course and yeah, you, you mentioned you mentioned that I the love movie. Donna Reed. You mentioned that the movie's long, and it is long. I think it's two and a half hours. It's yeah. a pretty long movie, um, but I, I actually like that because I think that the the brilliant thing the movie does is I think an hour and forty five minutes of the running time is setting up the main conflict. Right. It's, it's literally just showing George throughout his life, and it, it's so important for us to, to fully understand why he's as. Uh, upset as he is but it also right. defines all these characters like all uh, the whole town is filled with characters and and we know them so well by the end of the movie so when you see those people coming into his house and throwing money in front of him these aren't just random bedford falls residents these are people we know we feel like we've grown up with them absolutely and, and i think it, they do a great job of that by yeah, the way it's wonderful you, you do um they do feel like a community you know you kind of yeah. connect with the, every person yeah, and also the parts where um, where they're in the mirror universe where George Bailey was never there and they're sort of all um, twisted in some way. Yep. It's more. It's obviously more apparent to you that they're twisted because you knew them in the other timeline. Right, right. You you can notice the, ch- the changes right away. Yeah. Um, even in like... Like with the the bartender Nick, it's not even a physical change. Like sometimes they they cheat and make him look physically different, um, but with him, he's just his personality is different, and right. that wouldn't work if you didn't know what his personality was. Yep. Um, yeah, and and the, the the other thing is the town feels real. Um, this is because they that that main center square they constructed that whole thing. Um, that's one continuous set. Um, Amazing. And it costs so much money. <laughs> And cool. that's actually, a, a, but this, it does feel real, you know. It really it does, does help, and it's executed. I think you know with this, precision. The, the funny thing about this movie is this movie bombed when it came out. Um, mm. It was not a successful movie. It kind of it kind of hit at the wrong time. Um, it it had been far enough away from from World War II where people were like starting to get over it and. They did the, the uplifting cheesy movie wasn't th- a thing people were looking for. We were just uh, on the cusp of getting into the the Cold War, um, right. and so this is a very kind of socialist movie. Um, it's it's very anti capitalism, um, so that didn't resonate very well with a lot of people. This movie yeah. really didn't pick up spe- steam until it was um, I think optioned and started playing on cable. And that's really when it became a Christmas staple. These people's I forget which channel started it, but they started I think it was, it was NBC. Yeah, I think it was one of the major networks, but they started playing it around Christmas time and that's when it became the the thing that it is now. Um It's it's wonderful. And yeah. and my sister is adamantly wrong about everything that she says. <laughs> I need to read that article. Although I did enjoy her, her article, but um Yeah, it was it was funny i mean i think i can appreciate just watching something too many times to the point where you just start to your brain just starts to pick out the inconsistencies even if you would have liked the movie otherwise um yeah but it's not and i don't want to have a cindy bashing (laughs) session on my podcast but it's not it's a we we approach the theme of the film from fundamentally different angles Mm -hmm. um and every time she says but but he's so miserable i say that's the point like that Mm -hmm. so it's something her and i are never going to agree on but (laughs) i I will say that on the american film institute's list of top 100 most inspiring films 
this movie is number one. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I'm the only one that thinks these things. <laughs> yeah. So the American Film Institute agrees Yay, with me. Yeah, I it's official. <laughs> so but it makes it makes me wonder how many other you know, since you mentioned this movie bombed, it makes me wonder how many other like potentially great movies are just languishing and, and have never been seen by anyone and Yeah, yeah. Uh, just just luck, you know, just bad luck. Yeah. That is interesting. I think the coolest thing to me about any of these movies is, uh, to me, and I think to you guys and to anyone else that really enjoys movies, w the, watching these films are, to me, what I think of when I think of Christmas. I think of getting together with my family and, and watching these movies. And on Thursday, when I go home to hang out with my family for the day, that's what we're going to do. I mean, we're going to sit down and we're going to watch the movies we've seen hundreds of times before. Um, I can tell you right now we're going to watch White Christmas. We're going to watch The Santa Claus because that got thrown into the rotation somehow. And I <laughs> still don't understand how. Um, we're going to watch A Christmas Carol, two versions of it. We're going to watch the George C. Scott version. And then we're going to watch the Mickey's Christmas Carol version because that's the one my sister likes. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to watch It's a Wonderful Life. And normally that starts really late. Um, and the rest of my family has gone to bed. My dad usually stays up with me for most of it, but, and that's, that's just, that's just what, that to me is Christmas sitting around, you that's know, awesome. doing that, hanging out with family. Um, so, so I think that's why I wanted to do the 12 days of Christmas movies on the website. That's why I wanted to have the talk with you guys tonight, because to me, Christmas is watching these great movies, um, that yeah. remind us of what Christmas is, which is a yeah. loop I just made. <laughs> yeah, that's it's true. Nice loop. <laughs> Maybe Christmas yeah. doesn't come from a store. <laughs> <laughs> Don't spoil your article tomorrow. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, and, and I mean that's the thing. There, we each brought our favorite movie. There are so many more other movies. Um, I would love to hear from you guys out there. Uh, what is your? It's a Wonderful Life. Your Christmas vacation your christmas story your movie that that you guys watch every year um you know please comment share let us know because i i would maybe there's some movies out there that that like christmas vacation i've never seen but need to be in my rotation um so i'd love to hear from everyone out there um but uh, i think that's that's it for us unless you guys um, had anything else you wanted to say no merry christmas everybody yeah, no. Uh, I think we covered a lot of it. Um, I, you know, definitely uh, good to talk about those movies, and you know, we'll come back and talk about some more Christmas movies next year. So, plenty more to talk about. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, next week on the podcast, our last podcast of 2015, um, we're going to be talking about my favorite director, Quentin Tarantino. Um, so look look forward to that. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Matt, have you mm -hmm. watched all the Quentin Tarantino movies? I mean, I, I mean, not in the last week. Well, you better get started, Matt. Yeah, well, I will. <laughs> I have them all memorized, though. So quite an assignment. I, nice. I'm going to watch them all. I'm very excited. Um, and and by the time that comes out, I will have seen Hateful Eight. Um, I probably will just talk about a very high level how I liked it. Um, but Christmas Day, right? I, yeah, I'm going the day after Christmas. Um, yeah. Which is, I'll, I'll talk about this next week, and it's kind of cheating to say it now because I haven't actually seen it, but. If you like movies, I think seeing that movie in 70 millimeter is something you need to do. Um, it's, you've got two weeks starting Christmas Day to see it in 70, and you, I think you need to. Done. Is there anywhere you you need? Uh, I'll I'll put the link to where that's playing in the show notes. Gentry, you need to check out if it's playing in San Antonio. Absolutely, I'm um, I'm definitely doing it. Matt, I already checked. It is playing in Denver. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> got two weeks Matt. <laughs> just just drop your babies off at like the the fire station temporarily i'll, I'll just take them in to see the movie oh yeah that'll can't, go well can't be that bad yeah they won't notice yeah right um but yeah that that that's it for us uh gentry uh where where can you be found on the internet um i am at wench tweet uh w-e-n-c-h-t-w-e-e-t -E as always, and um, otherwise, follow uh, Daily Planet Films on Facebook. Um, yeah. Yep, and Gentry, as part of our 12 Days of Christmas, wrote an article on Elf and Will Ferrell, so you should check that yeah, out. Yeah, check it out. 
Matt? Great movie. How about you, Matt? I am on Give Twitter letters. at More Dinner Mail, and you can click on that in the show notes. I think that's the first time you've <laughs> said it on the podcast. Is it? I think so. That's how I pronounce that made-up word, <laughs> um, which is the correct pronunciation. And I wrote, uh, I wrote an article about the Santa Claus. I wrote an article about the Christmas story. And tomorrow, an article about the Grinch, the Jim Carrey Grinch. Uh, we'll be hitting daily planet, dailyplanetfilms.com. Yeah, I think by the time people are listening to this, it'll probably be up. So oh, yep. check that out. Um, you can find me on Twitter uh, at ScottDaily85. That's D-A-L-Y. Our website Twitter is at Daily Planet Films. Um, and you can read all these articles uh, at www.dailyplanetfilms.com. Um, I just published my review of Star Wars. It's a spoiler-free review, or as much as can be possible when writing a review of a movie. Um, the only things I spoil are the things that are told within the first 30 seconds of the movie. Um, so you should go check that out. Um, also, I've written a couple articles for the 12 Days of Christmas as well. One on Gremlins and my favorite Christmas scene in that movie. And then um, one on Christmas Vacation. And then on uh, Christmas Eve, I'll be writing about uh, Miracle on 34th Street and wrapping up our, our 12 Days. So check that out. Um, other than that, everyone have a, a very happy holidays. Merry Christmas, uh, whatever else you celebrate. And we will see you next week.